the witness stands before the Lord of the earth as the beast ascends from the bottomless pit. For 2,000 years the church faithfully witnessed while millions were martyred. Now we stand on the precipice of time and eternity, crying out for an authoritative witness. In a world of confusion, we seek clarity. In a world that's gone mad, we seek a powerful witness. We long to hear thunder from the throne as mankind destroys the earth. Yet, can we bear this witness? The world as a whole will not, but happily celebrate when the witness is killed by the one who arises from the pit. For this witness is against everything they believe for their deepest aspirations and their unfulfilled dreams. The world as a whole wants peace at any cost among all people blurring the lines of nationality, cultural norms, and religious convictions. They long for a time where the entire world advances out of its infancy and reaches an age of maturity where all religions are on the same level with none having a corner on the truth. They long for a time where their counselors alone will be the embodiment of all truth given legislative ability to enact their will upon the people. In their mind, this can only happen when the witness is removed. Moreover, the world does not want to hear that God is on his throne sending plagues upon the world for the rejection of his Son, Jesus Christ. For 2,000 years we have seen plagues epidemics, famines, and earthquakes in various places. We have seen wars, heard of rumors of war, and have seen nations arise against nations. We have witnessed great forest fires and global heat waves. We have witnessed the pollution of the seas, the rivers, and springs of water. We have also witnessed air pollution causing death and destruction worldwide. See Revelation 8, 1-12. We have witnessed the increase in mental illness and the rise of the first psychiatric hospitals and insane asylums being set up by the Muslim physicians in Baghdad, Iraq in 750 AD. Today more than half the population has been diagnosed at one point in their life as being mentally ill in need of psychiatric counseling and prescribed psychotropic drugs. This is the first woe. See Revelation 9, 1 through 12. In 610 AD, the Islamic religion began by slaughtering thousands, eventually millions, in the name of Allah. Throughout the centuries, they have tortured and beheaded those who refused to convert to their form of religion. They have been equally brutal to the Jews, seeking to wipe them off the face of the earth. Even today, the emerging Islamic caliphate ISIS seeks world domination and brutal destruction for what they term infidels. The heavenly angel announces this plague upon the world by sounding the sixth trumpet. See Revelation 9, 13 through 19. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons, idols of gold, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk, nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Revelation 9, 20 and 21. I ask, where is the witness of the church? All I hear is confusion, contradictions, and heated arguments among those who claim to know Jesus Christ. But I hear no witness to the world. God is on His throne, and before the last trumpet is sounded, there will be a global destruction that's unimaginable. When the beast ascends from the pit to kill the witness, the world will witness the final seven bowls of God's wrath. See Revelation chapter 16. Global drug addiction, the Islamic Caliphate, and a global epidemic of every known virus will pale in comparison to the final wrath of God. Jesus said it best, For then there will be a great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. 
Matthew 24, 21-22. Therefore, let us witness now to the entire world of God's saving grace. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel which is the power unto salvation. We need to preach from the rooftop that God has all the answers needed to solve all of our emotional and psychological problems. See 2 Peter 1, 3. We must believe that He has the power to make us into a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. See 2 Corinthians 5.17 We must constantly encourage our brethren that He will never leave us or forsake us, no matter how bad it gets. As I'm writing this, I'm getting reports that the Islamic State, ISIS, is planning on attacking America, perhaps from within. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Revelation 14.12 For he who endures to the end will be saved. What a glorious day that will be! For at the last trumpet we will be raised up in the twinkling of an eye. Praise God! So until the beast stops the witness by forming his new world order, and outlawing the proclamation of the gospel beyond our own relatives, we need to share the simple gospel with everyone we come in contact. See Matthew 28, 16-20. We must not be afraid to share the gospel wherever and whenever we go. It is the great commission to every believer. I implore you to share the simple gospel in the government buildings, the public schools, and yes, even in your place of employment. If we are arrested for sharing the gospel and put into jail, then we will be in good company. For the apostles had no such fear when they were commanded to stop sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is recorded in Holy Scripture, Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Acts 4, 18 and 20. Friends, if we are truly Christian, then we have seen and heard very many precious things concerning our Lord Jesus Christ. Through His death and resurrection, we have been given a new life in Him where truly old things are passing away. No longer are we haunted by our past, but forgiven the guilt of our sins and empowered by the Holy Spirit to walk in righteousness. Day by day we are being made into the perfect image of the risen Messiah, Son of the living God. Simply put, we are nothing without Christ. This witness stands before the Lord of the earth. Let me encourage you to take your stand today as a witness for Jesus Christ and all that is coming upon the world. Let me encourage you to secure a copy of my latest book, Stand Firm, Godly Counsel for the Last Days. God bless you, my friends, and remember to stand firm. (music) 